So I will segue smoothly. Actually, I won't. I won't simply troon out to the old cow stuff. I will segue naturally and organically and femininely uh, to quoting myself. I think that oh, here we go. This is Ren. Oh boy, he. <laughs> He looks like a Niza Joma. <laughs> if it wasn't for like the five o'clock shadow and the the um the really manly jaw, he would look so much like I Dubs' wife. <laughs> wow, like the body is matching too. Unbelievable. So I said that. And then this shooting happens, right? And I don't want to spoil it. So, um, let's take a look at Anisa and I what they actually look like right now. This is a very recent picture of them from, from 20, I think 21 weeks ago. His hair is even greasier and longer now. Um, but this is them. This is the power couple. I looks like a seventies porn star. He's got like a Ron Jeremy look going on to him. And Anisa, I don't know, like I say, every time I try to describe Anisa, I just go for busted. That's the safe word. She looks like you took a woman and then took a baseball bat and just beat the fuck out of her. And now she's busted. And this is them hanging out together. And this is a picture of that true and I talked about and the shooter from Tennessee. And I don't know if you realize this chat. But they look exactly the same. They are fucking identical. You can see that Anissa is on the left, I does on the right. They just are dead ringer for each other. It's really the most bizarre thing. Um, so we can call them Puniza and Itrunes from from uh, <laughs> these two right here. This is a power couple. If only if I Itrunes had found uh, Puniza. <laughs> they would have true love. <laughs> Degenerate phenotypes, maybe. Um, and I bring this up, not just to bully Anisa, which is always funny, but because there is some drama happening with uh, Creator Clash 2. Uh, Creator Clash 2 is, I think it's something that iDubs and Anisa started up as competition for some other big YouTuber boxing thing. But it's basically just like YouTubers fighting each other, and since they're not, they don't really have a lot of contestants. It's like H3's uh, employees are participating in shit. It's like really, really like anonymous people. And even then, Sam Hyde says in his criticisms of the event that it's not even like a fair matchup. There's like obvious imbalances between the two. Like you have real fighters and people who've never fought before training for the first time. So, uh. I don't know what's going on with it. However, I, I showed on my stream a couple of weeks ago uh, just because someone asked me to. They said uh, they wanted me to play a, just a clip of Froggy Fresh on his YouTube channel getting a super – or no, rather, other way around. Uh, Sam Hyde was on his YouTube channel, and Froggy Fresh sent in a super chat to be like, hey, Sam, I'd love to train with you. And Sam Hyde responded positively and said, sure, you know, whatever. And then soon after that, he's notified by Creator Clash 2 uh, anonymously. So you don't really know who's doing what, that um, uh, he's no longer a participant in Creator Clash 2. And there is a statement. I believe I've read the other statement um, already. If not, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to skip to the new one. Creator Clash 2 saying that... Um, as you may be, and this really feels like iDubs wrote it. Like the way that iDubs is like now super passive aggressive and has like a barely held back hatred of all of his old fans. It's, it definitely sounds like him. Uh, especially one part in particular. As you may be aware, we recently announced Froggy Fresh will be leaving the Creator Class 2 ticket. We want to provide some additional information around the rationale for this decision to help clarify some of the online chatter. To help clarify some of the online chatter, I can. It is not possible for me to read that sentence and not hear IDubs' voice. It just sounds like something he would say in one of his YouTube videos without any kind of refinement whatsoever. 
um, or having any kind of like HR like look over it to make it sound like not the most pretentious shit possible. Uh, we have a legally binding code of conduct that each of our creator class two fighters are held to the violation of which is grounds for termination. Unfortunately, there were several violations made by Froggy Fresh during his tenure with creator class this year. The creator class two team inclusive of the production company takes violations seriously and made several unsuccessful attempts to address them directly with froggy fresh and hopes we could work together to get things back on track. Um, Oh, that's right. He, I just made this because Keemstar had his own thing, right? Like he was setting up fights because Keemstar got involved with this. Um, Froggy Fresh denies that they made any attempt to contact him before uh, telling him that he was off the ticket. They completely denied that. And uh, Sam Hyde was doing stuff, I think uh, specifically targeting um, that one guy, uh, Hassan. And Keemstar asked him to shut the fuck up, and he did. And he talked about this on, on their little uh, hangout or whatever. But, um, so Keemstar was able to afford Sam Hyde a kind of courtesy that they were, Idubs and Anisa were unable to afford Froggy Fresh, uh, with a much smaller venue. And I'll explain why. Um, <clears throat> he continues saying, when it became clear that the exhibited behavior wasn't stopping at risk of, to the other fighters, fans, and others involved in the event, the Creator Clash 2 team made the collective decision to move forward without Froggy Fresh from the ticket. Our number one priority is ensuring Creator Clash 2 is a positive, safe, welcoming space for everyone. We look forward to kicking off an amazing event, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, now, so it was like a charity boxing thing. So uh, Froggy Fresh had a, a Kids Cancer Foundation in the Nicholas Children's Hospital um, as his chosen charities. So IDUB's personally donated $50,000 to each of those charities um, to justify kicking Froggy Fresh out, even though uh, he was doing a charity thing to raise money for those two groups. So that's like his, oh, the charities aren't missing out. I've already covered it for them. So this decision was worth $100,000 to IDubs. Um Da, da, da. The fighters have been working hard. Let's focus on their fights, not any that may exist online. That's gay as shit. Keemstar mentioned how beefs on the internet are very important to hyping up the fights in real life. Like, that's a component to the advertising. And obviously, when you have all that shit with WWE and stuff, it's like the, the, the kayfabe, the, the narrative, the arguments. That, that hypes people up to see people beat the shit out of each other. It's not, <clears throat> you know, it's not interesting to see people who don't have any issues just having a fair fun welcoming little a little tussle with each other for on the mat for charity for the kids and nobody gives a shit i want to see sam hyde murder hassan piker literally physically destroy him break his bone break his neck in real time i would that that's the kind of entertainment that i would pay money to see uh i dubs doesn't seem to understand this now the question is what uh what is worth a hundred thousand dollars to to get rid of froggy fresh for without any warning without any any warning whatsoever the answer is that he made a joke saying that he lost the the fight he would subscribe to aniza's only fans and uh He's Froggy Fresh claims that they pointed out a specific clause in their contract with Creator Class 2 that says any mention of Aniza's OnlyFans is grounds for termination. He claims that. That's a very bold statement to make, but when you when you listen to Froggy Fresh talk, you don't get like this conniving like uh facade to him he seems like a really grounded person an everyday kind of guy i don't think that he has the the gumption to make up that kind of bullshit because he they threatened him 
they threatened him with a lawsuit because they paid him fifteen thousand dollars to to uh, train with, like for gym memberships and shit. And they want that money back now, because Idubs just dropped a hundred thousand dollars to cuckold himself. And he he comes out with Sam Hyde, and he, you know he seems like a. I don't. I don't know how to say this without being offensive, but just please trust me that he comes across very, very well-intentioned and not the type of guy to lie about shit just for the sake of it. And Sam Hyde repeatedly backs up that kind of, uh, that he's that kind of guy. And he just says, uh, they pointed out to the contract that I violated it by mentioning her only fans. And they said, that's why they terminated. And I'm forced to assume that that is, honest because it it really sounds like it um so now they're threatening to bury him with litigation when he was just trying to help a charity event unless they unless he gives them fifteen thousand dollars that he's already spent to train with to attend their charity event um so but i think that what will probably happen is that they'll find some way Sam Hyde and, and Keemstar. He has so much like goodwill support right now for his, uh, because he's being obviously fucked over by these, these gross goblin people. Let me put the goblins back on screen so you can see what uh, goblin people look like. Um, I want to remind you that Ida has literally published a video saying that he doesn't care about her OnlyFans, and if dudes jack off to her, that's okay, because he's a cool freaking guy, and she'll come back to him at the end of the night anyways. So he's obviously not insecure about this whatsoever, and neither is she. Uh, so yeah, I think that probably something will happen, Keemstar and, and Sam Hyde. Using Sam Hyde probably just because he likes the guy, Keemstar, because there's... He's very much about building his reputation as someone who's like, oh, sure, I'm involved in the drama, but I'm a good guy, and I try to help people when I can. So Keemstar will, will bail him out, probably, give him some opportunity to make, you know, some big ones, some big monies to pay back uh, the bullshit and not get litigated into the ground. Um... Oh yeah, the, some fucking guy. I don't even remember. He some asshole. If you listen to the the audio of uh, Keemstar and Sam Hyde talking about this, and Nick, Nick the Oreo and some other greaseball fucking losers are there. Apparently Oreo likes me. I don't care. I'm gonna keep making fun of him because I only know he's fat and he's named Oreo. I apologize, kind of. Uh, but some guy from the organization joins and he just shits all over the place for like 15 minutes, lets nobody talk and then leaves. And he just says that it's completely justified and that's it. <laughs> oh, he's a troon chaser. Well, then he deserves it. Fuck him. <laughs> I hope he gets that, that pooners that he's going after. Uh, so now, now chat. Here's the question. Okay. What could possibly drive this woman, this goblin woman, to so thoroughly ruin the life of iDubs? What could possibly convince her that doing this to her man... Her, by the way, she is for his first girlfriend. You want to talk about uh, my... my uh, my PewDiePie role. This is the uh, the instance of it working in reverse. He stuck to his first girlfriend that he met as a fan of his show, and she has completely destroyed him. Could it be this chat? Coffee. Huh? What was that? It looked good in the little viewfinder there. So I just kind of kept going. Six years in the making. Six years. He thought, I'm an edgy boy. I'm like Sam Hyde. I can beat Libin and get away with it. I can, I can, it looks good on the viewfinder there. Nothing can happen to me. I'm cool on the internet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at her face. Look how she's looking at you, bro. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, and 
I get to. Uh, there's actually a, a nice segue from this to my next topic as well, because I found this picture while trying to find a nice, a uh, recent picture of them that shows what kind of how they look like. The trying to find one to compare with this. Um, I knew that they looked more like this in recent times with their hair longer, like porn stars. Uh, but I found this one. I thought, you know what? What's really funny about this one? Look at her. Okay, look at that potato face going on there. And those really bright le uh, red lipsticks going on. And compare her to the Pooner. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.